last two weeks, I've been posting daily bar tips on my TikTok account. I've been really shocked by the response. I have 1,500 followers out of nowhere, and I'm happy that my daily tips have been helpful for you. One frequent question that I keep getting in the DMs is about how I memorize material for the bar exam. It just wasn't possible for me to address all those tips on TikTok, which is why I moved it on to here YouTube. So if you want even more bar content, subscribe to my channel. My name's Andrena. I'm a practicing attorney in the DC area, and I'm licensed in California and DC. But in order to become a practicing attorney, I first had to pass the California bar. Hopefully later this week, I'll be able to post another video where I talk more about my bar exam studying journey for the California bar exam. It was definitely an intense experience, which culminated in me getting into a car crash week before the bar exam, me losing part of my front tooth and having to get a dental procedure, and my laptop crashing midway through the essays. But I still passed! And you will too. My first step is that memorization should happen parallel with practice questions. It should not precede it. One big mistake that I see students constantly make is that they refuse to engage in any of the practice questions before they feel they have a good grasp of the material. This is a big mistake. While yes, you should have general knowledge about the content before engaging with it, you do not have to have everything memorized before starting practice essays or practice MBEs. Effective bar exam studying is all about prioritizing what you have to memorize. Are you supposed to know what the most important materials to memorize are when you're not engaging with the questions to identify what's being tested, how it's being tested, and how frequently it's being tested? My next piece of advice is to memorize your subject outlines in manageable sections. So for example, if you are studying your crim law outline, you might spend a little bit of time working on the section about the elements of a crime. Another section on, you know, the homicide. So first degree murder, second degree murder, involuntary manslaughter, voluntary manslaughter. Then you may move on to property crimes. Breaking it up into little sections is going to make your memorization a lot easier to process. Sometimes it can be a little hard to do on your own. One resource that I thought was really good at this were the critical past flashcards. Now I think I've said this before, I am not a flashcard person. So I was not using the critical past flashcards on a daily basis in the late stages of the bar exam. And that was not my main source of memorization. But what it did do was it allowed me to figure out what were those good logical chunks to break it up to. Another thing I liked about the critical pass flashcards is that the way it wrote out the rules was very simplified and it just was much more condensed than the Barbary outline. So it was just a lot easier for me to process. But I think I've said this before, I was not a flashcard kind of studier. So critical pass flashcards were not the resource I was using on a daily basis in the late stages of the bar exam to memorize. But that's just me. I am just not a flashcard learner. I do have a lot of friends who were flashcard learners and by far the critical pass flashcards were the number one resource that they used. There were some friends who would incorporate the flashcards into their daily routine because when you get the critical pass flashcards, you also get online access to like be able to view the cards on the app. So if they were waiting at the doctor's office or they were on the train, they were still able to easily study. And you know, they may say, okay, well, I'm on the subway. I'm going to focus on this one flashcard and I will study all of the property crimes on this flashcard during the course of the subway ride. But like I said, for me personally, flashcards were not my style, which brings me to my next tip. You need to identify your individual learning style. Identifying your individual learning style is going to allow you to develop the most effective strategy for going through your outline and memorizing the contents of the outline. So for example, if you're an auditory learner, you really like listening to lectures. You like listening to the audio supplements that some companies have where you just hear the law being spoken out to you. Another thing that I know some of my auditory learning friends really liked doing was if they were learning a specific section of their outline, they would record themselves on their iPhones explaining that section of the outline. And then when they were out and about, they would listen to it later 
in like with their AirPods and their iPhone. They would do this while they were walking the dog. They could do this while they were commuting in the car, similar to how you would just listen to a podcast. There are also some people who are visual learners. Visual learners love charts. They love really cow colorful outlines. They like engaging with the material in a visual way. So for me, I, I would think I'm a little bit of a visual learner and a kinesthetic tactile learner, which I'll go through next. But for me, the visual learner side of me really loved seeing colors in the outline and really liked taking my outline apart and reconfiguring it in a way that made sense to me. So if there was a line of text that I didn't think made sense, but would make a lot more sense if I saw it in chart form, I would create a little chart and put it in my outline something else I did to help with my visual learning style is that every time that there was a state specific distinction in the outline, I would make it purple. So I knew in my brain, if I saw purple in my outline, that meant it was a California thing. There's some essay questions on the California exam that ask you to compare California law with federal law. You see this a lot in the professional responsibility context. You see it a fair amount in evidence, sometimes and even in civil procedure. Having the California distinctions in a different color really helped with my recall because there were times I was thinking to myself, what was in my outline? And I would see it in my head and I would remember what was in purple and I knew that meant that was the California subject. If you're a kinesthetic learner, you learn best by doing physical acts. So you love flow charts, you love diagrams, you like writing on a whiteboard, which was very much something I loved doing. I was obsessed with whiteboards. I would specifically go to my law school library right when it opened, just so I can get one of the study rooms with the whiteboards in it. I loved seeing colors. I loved walking around and pacing in my study room as I was studying and reciting a rule out loud. I had one friend in particular who I would frequently go to the Chick-fil-A across the street from our law school and we would walk there on our lunch break from bar exam studying and sometimes we would talk about a particular concept and by walking and talking about it, but walking while I was doing it, there was just something about that that allowed me to memorize it better. My main point is know yourself, know your strengths, and act on your strengths. My next tip is use mnemonic devices. Mnemonic devices are like using little acronyms to allow you to trigger key words that you're using. Mnemonic devices work really well when you're trying to learn a series of elements or maybe a series of defenses that are all kind of together. There are so many well-known bar exam related mnemonic devices. One of them that I still remember from contracts, I think my legs, which is all the different types of contracts that trigger the statute of frauds. So I think it's like my legs, marriage, contract longer than a year, land, executor, it's G, goods, S, surety. There you go. And there's just something about it that helps you memorize it. Don't go too crazy though with mnemonic devices because there is such thing as just having too many of them so it becomes really overwhelming. Even though your bar exam courses may give you some mnemonic devices, sometimes it's fun making up your own, especially when it's related to you know, someone in your family or you're like using names of friends in them. I had you know, some of my friends and I made some ridiculous ones around the bar exam that I will not repeat, but it allowed me to remember it. And I found that to be super helpful. And I would usually, because I'm a visual learner, designate it in a different color somewhere on my outline. So I would know what, what the key buzzwords in and maybe I'd have them in red and I'd have the letter in a different color. And I need that because that was a way of me engaging with my visual learning style. It really helped me to teach other people content. There's just something about having to explain it to someone, having to answer their questions about it, and having to discuss it and articulate it without, you know, looking at a piece of paper that really helped, you know, solidify me having a particular concept memorized. Now, this could be a trap because if you are someone who gets really distracted by other people and it will end up in you socializing the entire time and not studying, then this may not be the study tip for you. 
for me, I had to limit myself. So what I told myself is I have an hour of socializing when I'm in the library because I would be in the library from like eight to five, Monday through Friday. So I'd give myself an hour of like social time. And during that social time that maybe I'd be like talking about a particular concept with a friend. I mean, people kind of knew because I'm like, okay, I need my like personal time now. Not only was it good for my memorization, but it also kind of helped my mental health if you completely isolate yourself during the bar exam and you're someone who's just generally extroverted, that's not healthy for you either necessarily. So for me, it was a little bit of a win-win. I was able to get my socialization in, but I was able to keep it productive and you know in line with my study plan. My next step is to focus on highly tested areas. I'm going to keep saying this all throughout my videos. It is not possible to memorize everything in those Barbary and Themis outlines. Even the short version of the Barbary outline, I think was like 86 pages long. It is not reasonable. Even if you had an entire year to study for the bar exam to expect you to have all that memorized verbatim, you have to prioritize. The easiest way to do this is to focus on the highly tested areas for each particular subject. How do you figure out what these highly tested subjects are? A couple ways. If you're taking Barbary and Themis, a lot of the time they flag for you what those highly tested subjects are. If you're someone who doesn't have Barbary or Themis, one book I highly recommend for the MBE is the Emanuel's book. I have a link to the Emanuel's book below. This book is really not a waste of your time. As you read through it, you are going to be learning every single subject over again, but only the most important pieces of information for each of those topics. I think this book does a really good job of identifying what the most highly tested topics are for all the MBE subjects. I also think it does a really good job of giving specific strategies for how to approach particular MBE questions. So for example, I think I remember for the evidence you know, chapter in that book, the go through a lot of hearsay because hearsay is a very heavily tested topic, both in the essays and in the MBE. And the way it explains it is in a very like simplified, practical way of this is what it is and this is how it's gonna be tested on the test. Another way to figure out what the highly tested topics are is by actually going through practice essays. When you start going through practice essays, you're gonna see a lot of patterns. You're gonna see what the, not only what the heavily tested topics are, but what topics go together. So for example, for community property, if you're in California, there's really like one main outline that you use to answer pretty much every single community property essay you could possibly get for the bar exam. You start off with this main intro that Barbary and Themis feed you about explaining what community property is, what separate property is, and how to identify it. So, you know, issue one, is it community property or separate property? Issue two, is there some sort of transmutation or there's there some sort of contract that changes the character of the either separate or community property? The next section is like, okay, how are these individual assets, you know, analyzed and what are you know specific rules for those special assets? You know, are there any sort of you know due process issues that are involved? So it's just I may be missing something because I'm literally rattling this off from my six-year-old's memory, but it made it so easy because I knew that no matter what, I had to know that like intro paragraph differentiating community property from separate property. I had to know what transmutation was because that pretty much comes up on almost every single community property question you get. There are you know certain types of assets that are frequently analyzed, like property comes up, so like houses and how that's divided. And sure, there are some random rules and random assets you have to analyze, like 401k plans or what happens with workers' compensation. And maybe you don't have all of that perfectly memorized. Don't get me wrong, you study it. I'm not saying don't study it, but maybe that's not something you have 100% memorized. As long as you have the rest of it down, it's okay if you miss a small subsection. And that's really what my point is. You 
don't have to have everything memorized as if you were gonna take a law school exam because the standard is not to get the highest score on the exam, it's to pass. And if you have a majority of the issues down, you're gonna pass. Next, focus on lessons learned from the MBE and the essays. It's not just enough to do practice MBE problems. You have to review the MBE problems after you're done. In particular, you need to go through all the ones you got wrong and figure out why you got it wrong. I actually had a little chart that I used. If you guys are interested in it, I could probably post it. And I actually had a chart where it's just like, okay, this was the subject and this was generally what the topic was. This is why I got it wrong. So, and that could be for a variety of reasons. I didn't read the question right. I just didn't know the rule. I got confused because of X or Y. And then in the next column, I like synthesize, resynthesize the rule. So this is what the rule is and this is what this particular exception was. And I would do this for every single MBE question that I missed. And that sheet of questions that I missed and the resynthesized rules, that became part of my priority memorization. Even if I couldn't have every single part of my outline memorized, if I had that stuff memorized, I knew I was in good shape. I'm gonna be honest, the MBE writers are not that creative. They redo a lot of these questions. They start following similar patterns, they have similar tricks, and the more and more you do these MBE problems, you are start, gonna start figuring out what those tricks are. To the point where you at one point are gonna feel like deja vu as you're answering some of the questions. Trust me, that's how you wanna feel. And then we go through the essays the way I just did. You analyze the essay and I started creating these essay templates and that's how I would memorize the content, especially for the California subjects. For the California subjects, all I really cared about wasn't what it said in the big outline, but how did kind of the essay templates look? Like the reason I was still able to re-articulate to you the like structure for a typical community property question is because when I created my outline, I created my outline for community property almost like an essay template. How I would have attacked pretty much any community property question. And I memorized in that order, which is why now to this day, I could still kind of see the skeleton of what any typical community property question would look like. My next step is to memorize buzzwords or trigger words. The reason I think you should memorize these key buzzwords and trigger words is because bar examiner graders are going to be looking for these buzzwords, these trigger words, and they're gonna be expecting to see them on the page. I remember watching a lecture by someone who was a bar grader for the California bar and they said that a typical California bar exam grader only spends two to three minutes on every single essay and maybe will spend like five minutes on a performance test. The way they do that is they're looking for specific buzzwords, they're looking for specific headings. I will go into this in a separate video on essays because you know that's a huge part of your essay writing strategy. But in terms of memorization, buzzwords are also super helpful because it is a lot easier to memorize a word than it is to memorize a sentence or a paragraph. So for example, if we're talking about torts and we're talking about negligence, what are we talking about? Duty, breach, causation, damages. Buzzwords. The easiest way to memorize is by giving yourself grace to memorize less. I remember when I was approaching the end of my bar exam studying that I took some sort of workshop on what do you do if you get to an essay and you know nothing? Like you completely blink and have writer's block. And one of the tips is to pull for the buzzwords and just write out certain buzzwords on your piece of paper. And there's just something about doing that where when you pull one word, it triggers another word coming out, and then suddenly you're able to kind of develop this outline out of nowhere. And even if you don't know what the rule is exactly, you just kind of make up the rule and insert the buzzword. Now granted, I am not recommending this as your primary strategy. I'm saying this is what happens when you seriously have no idea how to answer the question. All right, my last tip is to create a retention schedule and incorporate that into your bar exam studying. For example, if you review contracts on week one, you wanna make sure that you are still reviewing contracts and going through your flashcards or going through your outline for contracts 
every single week leading up to the bar exam. I know this sounds really overwhelming because you're already reviewing and learning new content every single week, but trust me when I say that it is a lot quicker to go through those outlines by the time you're at the end of bar exam studying because by then you'll have most of it down. The reason it's important for you to keep maintain a retention schedule is because some of the best ways that we memorize is through spaced repetition and having a weekly retention schedule allows you to make sure that that space repetition is incorporated into your bar studying. This is why most bar prep companies prioritize the MBE subjects early in the bar exam studying process. The MBE subjects for most states are worth more than 50% of your score because the MBE itself is usually roughly 50% of your score. And on top of that, there's at least a couple of MBE related essay questions that show up in the essay portion of the exam. And those are my tips for memorizing content for the bar exam. Like I said, these are just examples of things that I did and my friends did to memorize, but I'm sure there are plenty of other strategies that I didn't touch on. If you're watching this and have other ideas, feel free to leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more bar content.